Hey everyone, Gnogat here. So I ran a Twitter poll on what my next video should be. Uh, either you have my deck profile or you have uh, a guide on how to play around bot breakers, hand traps, you name it, with Telement. So the overwhelming majority wanted me to make a guide on how to play through bot breakers and hand traps. So that's what I'm here for. So without further ado, let's go. All right, let's start with one of the most iconic board breakers, and that is Dark Ruler No More. I've already prepared a board state here. Um, obviously, you won't end on this every time, but I wanted to go over all the certain um, points of interactions here. So sometimes you'll just end on this. Sometimes you will just have the Redoer and Mascarina, depending on what hand traps the opponent has. But uh, I just set this up so we can talk about it more easily. Now, one of tournament's biggest strengths is that you have layered interactions. That means you have monster effects on the field, you have back row, you can have effects in the hand, your field spell can pop a card if you have it, and you can have shufflers in grave. Now, Dark Ruler No More will only get rid of one of these interactions, and that would be these monsters. And even that doesn't uh, cover it 100%, as I will show you now. So let's simplify this board state a bit. Let's put this away. And let's just say all you have is this. No shuffler, no nothing. Your opponent dark rulers you. And uh, let's just keep the mascarina just so that your opponent actually has dark ruler something. So um, this is now negated and you don't have an interaction on board at the moment. Now, if the opponent activates a monster effect, um, you can use Soliac, negate that effect and send the rule colors. Now, Rukalos in the grave will then, through its own effect, summon itself back. Now the Rukalos is back and it's no longer negated, so now you have the summon negate back. What you can now do is, the opponent activates effect to summon, use Rukalos, and uh, if you destroy the card that uh, summons, then you have to send a element card, and that's actually really helpful here, because you can actually send the Saliac. Now the Saliac will trigger in the grave, and you can search yourself a tier element cash tier. Now you can, in your opponent's main phase, special summon the tier cash by banishing the Soliac that you just sent and mill three cards. So just with these two cards, through a dark ruler, you ended up on one, two, and three interactions still. So that's pretty decent. Um, now, other things you can do is obviously if you have the luxury just set up the scream even if it's negated you will mill free that's pretty nice um, the field spell plus a shuffler can both be graveyard disruption and a pop and you can even use the pop to pop your own rule colors to just bring it back just as we did with the soliac or even better if you have a kaleido heart you use the field spell pop the kaleido heart um, then activate the effect now you might think, why would I pop Kaleido Heart when I can pop an opponent's card? Well, the Kaleido Heart comes back, sends a tier name from the deck to the graveyard, and that will trigger the tier name, and the Kaleido Heart can shuffle the card, so you still get your disruption uh, that, you would, that you would have used to the opponent's board, and the Merly in the grave can fuse with, let's say, the Grand Grenoble in my case, or if you don't play this version and you don't have any fusion monster, the Rukalos was negated or you already used it, you just use the Rukalos away and go into Drago's Tapelia. So that's for the planet. I just shuffled the Rukalos under my deck. Um, now, other things to note is obviously uh, Schism is also nice here because if they Dark Ruler you and try to play, and you can just activate Schism, banish your Shadol and the Dark, I'll just take the Mascarina, and slap a window on board after they Dark Ruler you because Dark Ruler is a window out, but they already used it. So that's helpful if you play a Schism version. Another thing that's nice to do is uh, obviously keep the tier cache in hand if you have it. Uh, sometimes I just like to use a search on the tier cache during my first turn so I can play through interactions like these and others. I'll show you later. One last thing, if you play Redua and you don't use it turn one, oftentimes I do use it turn one, but um, if you have the Shiren under the Redua, 
your opponent activates Dark Ruler, what you can do is you can flip Saliac or Schism, doesn't matter, one of these uh, that you have searched in your combo. Do not use the effect, you just flip it up. Now, because you reacted to the spell with the trap, you can react to this trap with the Redoer, because the Redoer cannot directly answer to the um, Dark Ruler no more, but it can chain to the Saliac. So now you can use the Redoer effect, detach the Sharon, banish itself. Now the Dark Ruler resolves, the board is negated, and now the Sharon Engrave triggers to fuse with whatever you have with a fusion monster into a Dragostepelia, or you have the Shiren plus the Rhino Heart that was also under the Redua plus the negated Vulcalos into a Kaleido Heart if you haven't already uh, made it in your turn one. So that's it for Dark Ruler no more. Okay, now for Lava Golem and Sphere Mode, um, generally not that great against the element, but still worth talking about. So. The, the opponent will have the priority in main phase to summon Lava Golem and, or Sphere Mode, and um, you obviously cannot react to them, that's why they're good. So, depending on what board you set up, if you have like a full board like this, they take out two interactions, you're still fine, you still have things that you can do with what's on the field, with your back row, whatever. If you have a smaller board because like they hand trapped you or something, uh, let's just go for the example from before. If they lava golem you here, um, that's pretty sad. Um, that's why it's still important to have your layered interactions, as I like to call them. So again, searching the tier cache during your turn one combo can be helpful, especially since summoning the tier cache, you mill three. Even if you miss, you turn on the Soliac to negate a card of your opponent. Another thing that is nice to know is after they used Lava Golem, and you, if you play the Schism version, you can make, uh, you can still make the window from here, um, and they already used one of their outs to window in Lava Golem, so they need to have a second one. Now, if they Lava Golem you again here, what can you do? <laughs> That's just how it is. But just. Worth noting is that uh, after they level new windows, pretty nice. Just so you, your interactions come in waves and you don't just like put all eggs in one basket. Now, evenly matched is one of the tougher cards to answer because you don't, you have to actually plan for it. Um, what does that mean is the way you get around evenly is to, the easy way is to put up an Omni Negate, which would be Baron, Toad, or Grapha. Now, not every version runs these, so sometimes you are left on just the Grapha. So what you can do is you just, in, in your st standard combo, if you suspect they play evenly or you know they play evenly, instead of Rule Colors, you can make the Grapha. Or what's also very nice to do is if you run Mascarina and you can set up a King of the Swamp in the Grave, just keep it here. If they announce that they're ending the main phase, you can use the Mascarina to go into Sprint, which will then send the Merli, and the Merli plus the King of the Swamp can then go into Grapha. Why do it this way? Because you're more flexible with your interaction uh, being IP Mascarina here. If they uh, appear to be trying to enter the battle phase and you expect there isn't evenly coming, you just make the Grapha. You have to do it in the main phase, sadly. You cannot do it in the battle phase, which would be better. But uh, that's at least one way to um, dynamically react to a state where the opponent has evenly matched. Now, if you don't have an Omni Negate, it's a lot tougher. Um, there just, there's just one more thing that you can do. Uh, let's just put these aside. And let's just leave the Kaleido Heart to be banished. And... Um, if you run Beatrice, that's make, that makes it more resilient to evenly matched. But even if you don't, uh, obviously Tear Crush is nice to have. It's only main phase, so you can't use it in the phase they use evenly, but they do it end of battle phase anyway. So in the main phase too, you would still have the Tear Cache. Um, let's say you just have this board. You went all out and you just made this board and they announce battle phase. You don't have an Omni Negate. You just have to let it happen. They go evenly. Now what you can do is... Uh, Beatrice, if you have it, chain, uh, redoer effect, chain, um, leaves, 
and now your whole, whole board just like gets vanished. You keep one thing, depending on the board state, we have to decide, let's just leave the Sully Egg here. So everything's gone. And now after the chain resolved, um, whatever you sent off of Beatrice, just put the Guido, and the Shiren will trigger. So after the evenly, uh, let's go Shiren for this. And then the Agido will trigger, or depending on your grave, you can also just send another tier name, whatever you want, and you would still have the tier cache, for example. Now you can also, with Beatrice, send a Sully Egg to get you a tier cache, if that's the way to play. Now, obviously, you still lost a lot of resources, so this is not optimal, but this is still something you can do against evenly. But uh, the most uh, effective way to combat this card is to make an Omni Negate. So let's move on to books, uh, Book of Eclipse and Book of Moon, which have been very popular in this current meta because they're good against the top two decks being Kashtira and Purely. And these cards, um, Book of Moon usually is just a one for one, um, sometimes not even that. But I just wanted to mention it here. Most of the things that work for Book of Eclipse also work for Book of Moon. So I want to talk about Book of Eclipse for the most part. So. For the first time I got Book of Eclipse, I thought like, wait, this turns off my whole board. So if you look at this board state, Soliac needs a face up. Let's just say this Rejo doesn't have material, otherwise that doesn't work. Um, so if they Book of Eclipse here, uh, your tier names are flipped face down, which disables both Scream and Soliac. Let's just ignore the schism for now. And the Mascarina wouldn't be able to um, uh, link with one of these because these are face down. So you would have to chain the Mascarina to the Book of Eclipse, which sometimes you might not want. Um, so what to do here? First of all, um, let's just talk about the ruling real quick. And that is Redoar if it has material. If you use the effect of Redoar um, to detach and activate an effect and the opponent chains Eclipse to flip it down, the effect will still resolve. So that's a ruling thing for you. So that's not a thing that works. Uh, it goes away and the Shiren will trigger. Now, back to this state. Um, if they eclipse you here and you don't use the Mascarina or you play Cross Sheep, for example, then everything is face down and your board kind of does nothing. So what can you do here? Again, your MVP will be the um, Telemans Cash Tira in your hand which you can summon, mill three, and even if you whiff, what you have now is you have a face-up monster to link with IP, but even more importantly, you have a tier name. So if you have Scream, your opponent summons something, you mill three more. Also, even more important, your Soliac is active now. So what does that mean? Opponent activates an effect on the field, you go Soliac because you have a tier name on board, and you now negate that effect and you send a monster. Now, um, Soliac does not say that you have to send a tier limit monster. So these face down monsters are also usable. So something you can do now is you negate a monster, you send the Kaleido Heart, Kaleido Heart effect, comes back, you send a monster, let's not take Murdy because we still have the IP, uh, let's take Havnas. Now, Havnus triggers, and even if your grave is not loaded, you go Havnus effect, confuse with the face down Rukonos, and make a Drago Stapelia. And lastly, you can still use the IP Mascarina to Xyz into Sprint and send them early and fuse away. So, Book of Eclipse here, um, we still ended up on one, two, three four, five, six, in this case, interactions. Obviously, you don't open with all of this. But just so you see, like, what just one tier cache in hand can re-enable on your board after you got eclipsed. Another meta staple right now is Triple Tactical Talents, a card you have to respect um, in deck building or the way you play. Now, for T-Element, the fact is that you do a lot of things in your main phase. So sometimes you cannot play around it. For example, upon some something, you Sully Egg, you send Kaleido Heart, Kaleido Artifact triggers, now the talent is active. Um, if you don't have an Omni Negate, um, which sometimes you just don't do, or 
the talent takes you by surprise. Um, there are some things you can do. And let's just talk about the implication of talents. Let's just put away the Kaleido heart. Let's just have a more simplified board. This goes away. Uh, let's put away the field spell. Uh, more simple board, uh, easier to understand. Uh, you don't have a tear crush in hand. The, you activated an effect, I don't know which one, and uh, the opponent talents you. Now, um, talents to take can be really, really strong because if you don't have, if you haven't used Rukalos, you can take it. And now, not only they have they um, taken one of your interactions, they also have a negate for another interaction that you might do. And that could be your Mascarena, that could be your Shiren effect from that tagging of Redua. Um, can be any tier name in the grave. So that obviously is a very, very good trait for your opponent. Now, what you can do in this situation, um, opponent says talents, announces to take, you chain Redua, uh, tag out the Shiren, first of all, uh, as part of the effect. Uh, let's say chaining two is Redua, and then chaining three is Mascarina. So you resolve Mascarina, go into Sprint, then the Redua resolves, banishes, and now the only monster you have left is the Sprint, which will go into your opponent's possession. Now, the Shiren will trigger, but also, um, interestingly enough, Sprint got summoned. So, quick ruling for you, if you summon the Sprint and they take it, uh, you still get to activate the effect. So, you can now send your Merly. And now, what that does, your opponent gets a useless Sprint and you still get to trigger two of your T-Element effects. And, uh, best case, you enable your Soliac this way. Okay, let's talk Super Poly. So Super Poly has popped up more and more because of Manadium. So the Draco Equist Super Poly combo can break the um, Calamity Lock before it happens. So let's talk about Super Poly in the context of T-Element. Now, in the previous boards, I have had IP on the field. Currently, I run IP. I'm a big fan of that card because of how dynamic it is. But another link too that you can run um, is Cross Sheep, really, really strong card as well. And in this scenario, it is even better because let's look at the Super Poly targets. Now, Draco Equist um, does nothing into this board because it needs a Synchro Dragon Monster. It might come up if you run a Ref Synchron build um, and you end on Barone plus uh, Crystal Wings somehow. Then they can Super Poly it. Um, but in this case, let's just not talk about it any further because at the moment we don't run any synchro variant. Now, Garuda does not have any applications in your standard board because um, this is an Aqua, this is a Cyberus, this is a Psy, and Cross Sheep is a beast, for example. Um, other thing that you could have on the field would be Grafa, which is a Fiend, Beatrice, which is a Fairy, Baron, which is a warrior. So you can see they all are different types. You have Winda, which is a spellcaster. So Garura right now, not that effective against this board. Um, so let's talk about these two. Now, most of the decks that just run Super Poly for the board breaking capabilities, they are on Garura and Mud Dragon. We just talked about Garura. So we have uh, Mud Dragon left. Um, we talk about Dragon's Study in a second. So, Mud Dragon means two dark monsters, uh, different typings. So, looking at this board state, or let's just take also the Grapha, just so we can talk about these standard combinations. So, um, dark monsters would be Grapha plus Mascarena, or Mascarena plus Redor, or Redor plus Grapha. These are all dark monsters with different typings. So, in this case, um, Having a cross sheep instead of the Mascarina helps. And you go for a rule colors instead of the Grapha. And now your board cannot be super polyed into Mud Dragon. Now you might ask me, hey, but uh, Kaleido Heart is a dark. Why can't he work? Because Kaleido Heart says cannot be used for a fusion summon. So if they try to super poly your Kaleido away, which happened to me a couple of times, tell them no. Uh, put that super poly back in your hand. Uh, there's no fusioning to be done here. Um, so 
this is a case where cross sheep uh, is better than IP. Um, Mud Dragon is also, if they get to it, is very, very strong against T Element because a lot of your interactions are targeting. So just looking at this board, these three cards target, target to negate, target to shuffle, target to pop. So having a super poly here, taking away, uh, let's say, a Mascarena and the Redraw into a Mud Dragon. Um, would leave you with only the Rule Colors as your interaction um, and the Telemann Scream to mill 3, which um, won't trigger anything that's targeting. So keep that in mind if you are thinking about getting super polyed. Now, um, as for Drago Stapelia, Drago Stapelia is not usually run in uh, super poly lists unless the deck in question has a lot of extra deck space. For example, Rescue Ace could technically run super poly plus Garura, Mud Dragon, and some other luxury targets like Drago Stapelia. The decks where it is relevant is other fusion decks. So that includes Chimera, that includes Branded, and that includes the T-Element Mirror. So if you know you're in that matchup, um, that means that Dragos the Pelia can fuse away your Rukalos plus one of your darks. Now, in case of Rukalos, that's not that relevant because Rukalos comes back as to our own effect. So the Super Poly will take away one of your interactions and put up one negate, which is still pretty strong. So try to think about that if you keep playing it branded or chimera to um, think about what darks you put on the board next to your rule colors. And if your locals, for example, is full of uh, these decks, then maybe run a cross sheep over an IP mask arena. Okay, we're done with the board breakers. So we move on to hand traps. And most of the time hand traps are like one for one traits. Um, they ash a surge or they veil or a summon. So you just have to use your general game knowledge to play around those. But there are some hand traps that I want to talk about, how to play around them in general. And one of these includes Draw and Lockbird, which, because of some combo decks popping up, has been getting more popular in this format. So um, against t element, depending on the build, it can either hurt or do nothing or relatively little. So I just want to say um, how to minimize the damage that this card can do. For that, I have... Uh, put out an example hand and just to show you how to maneuver through a potential draw without losing too much. So first of all, um, as I already said in my Tillament guide, uh, if you haven't watched it, check it out. I got a lot of positive feedback on it. If you like tier and if you watch this video, you probably do. Definitely check it out. So Burial Goods can send a Spell or Trap and you send the Trivi Karma. Now, you can park the Trivi Karma in your graveyard and you make more plays if you have them. And um, once they draw you, you can chain Trivi Karma to the draw to slip a surge under it, basically. So you still, in chaining two, get your surge and then draw is active. Um, depending on what you need, you can either just get the trap if your hand is decent. You can play the Grief as an extender if you play that, um, or you just get Scream if you already have Trap Access, for example. Um, getting Pearl or Rhino in this uh, instance would not be very useful. First of all, we already have it, but even if we didn't, if they draw you and you search Pearl or Rhino, now you have a field spell that doesn't search and only gets the pop effect and the attack boost, so the other alternatives are just better. But in this case, let's just park it here, and the opponent still has the draw in hand. So, Looking at this hand, you just want to sequence your stuff right. And in this case, um, using the King of the Swamp for a poly is very sad because now you wasted your one search on a poly and your hand kind of does nothing. So uh, you don't do that. Uh, what you can do is you can look at what search is the most valuable to you. In this case, it would be these two. And in this particular hand, it is the Pearl Rhino search. So, I'm using Pearl Rhino here, and in this hand, let's just search a Shiren. So we get the Shiren, and now your opponent withdraws you, and you chain the Trivi Karma to get a search. Now, uh, I already told you you can use one of these. 
Um, let's just for the example of this hand get the grief because it's cool. So you get the grief. You summon the Fenrir. It cannot search, but it still is uh, applying pressure, so that's nice. And uh, you cannot search the Poly, but whatever. You special Shiren, discard the King. You mill three. Um, for the sake of this video, I will just say, okay, we totally whiffed on our mills. It's very sad. Um, I just don't want to overcomplicate things. You have the Shiren on the field. And one nice thing you can do in this hand, for example, would be just to show off what Grief can do, just normal summon the King of the Swamp because you haven't normal summoned yet. You activate the Grief and you summon the Rhino Heart and then send the King of the Swamp because it's a water and this is a water. So now Rhino Heart can trigger. Send a tier name. The tier name in your graveyard will then fuse with the King of the Swamp. Let's just go for a Rule Colossus, very generic. And then you can also go here for rank 4 Xyz. So for a draw now, we have the Pelerino for the pop, we have the Fenrir for the banish, we have the Redoar, which uh, with the King of the Swamp set up in Grave can either do Grafa, which in this case is not that good because you don't have any cards in hand, uh, or you make Kaleido Heart to shuffle something, for example. And we have the Rule Colors. Not the best board in the world, but we just assumed that we whiffed on the mill, we opened two King of the Swamp and your opponent rolled us, so it's good enough. Um, something else that I wanted to note is uh, if you play the Shadow Grand Grenade package, um, just a quick reminder, that is King of the Swamp plus a tier name, makes Grand Grenade, Grand Grenade sends Abcalone and Abcalone adds you. Where is it? Schism. And then you discard a card. Um, if they draw you, you cannot add the Schism from your deck, but if you have milled it uh, over the course of your combo, um, Abcalone can also add from Grave. So you use Abcalone effect. Add the schism from the grave and then discard, and now you still have the schism. So sometimes, sometimes the draw doesn't do anything against Abcalon. Sometimes it does. Just something to be wary about. Um, another thing that can help against draw is if you open Foolish Burial. You can start off with Foolish Burial. Obviously, if you have Fenrir, uh, special the Fenrir first, because the Foolish Burial might trigger. Fusion or a Rhino Heart, and then you can summon it. But uh, let's just say we have summoned it and we didn't use the effect yet. We go Burial and we send the Miller. Now the Miller activates, and the reason you do this is because what the Miller can do is it can send two of the searches. So now you will resolve both of the searches in the same chain. You get two searches, and then they draw you. So this way um, you have uh, sequenced it so that you can get two searches instead of, let's say you had a Pearl Rhino with it and then you go Pearl Rhino first. Now the Miller does a lot less. Speaking of Pearl Rhino, um, another thing that you should keep in mind on sequencing is if you have terraforming, you activate terraforming, they can draw you and now the Pearl Rhino is useless. So try to look for other searches before activating um, the terraforming, or you could also opt to cut it, but I think cutting terraforming is a bit too much commitment into draw, uh, into playing around draw, because the card is still, like, Pearl Rhino is still one of the strongest cards in the game, and just cutting one copy because of uh, draw, I don't think is worth it. Um... Another field spell that a lot of people run is Raid Soft. Now this is definitely cuttable in a draw format because it's a luxury to say, okay, I have my terraforming and it can search me two things because uh, yeah, the Raid Soft, um, searching the Raid Soft, it doesn't even give you a disruption that Taldorino would give you, right? You just have the field spell for the attack boost in that case. And just even hard opening Raid Soft, you get a Fenrir, you get rolled and then the Fenrir can't search and uh, your other searches are turned off. So for the Fenrir pressure, that's not really worth it. So just some things to keep in mind in deck building and playing when considering draw. 
Okay, let's talk about Nibiru because Nibiru has a good, like, strong impact on the board in general. Um, luckily for us, it's not very good against our deck. You just uh, have to have your the correct play patterns, but the thing is you don't have to invest to do these play patterns because you want to play like this anyway. Uh, what am I talking about? Um, so the way I like to play it is I like to start off with Sharon, mill some cards, maybe get a Reinhardt, normal summoned, or mill through the Shiren on the field, mill something, um, follow it up with a Tealement Cash Tira, mill some more. So you do a lot more milling than you actually summon. If you see, this is only three summons. Um, if you somehow get two more summons, I don't know how, and they nib you here, and you milled a lot, um, this triggers the Sharon effect. So you just leave the Sharon on the field, or if you get a level four with it, um, if the Rhino came from your hand, you can leave this because if they nip, then you trigger both Rhino and Chiron. If it came from the grave and it would get banished uh, on leaving the field, you can just go into Redua because if they nip you here, you just tag out with the Redua. Now the Rhino goes to grave and the Chiron still triggers to fuse. And you just threaten these interactions until you go for either a Rule Colors or a, where is it, Grapha. Now, these require King of the Swamp access, which you sometimes don't have. So in some instances, you just have like Field Spell and you don't have King of the Swamp access. So you want to go for a minimal board. Um, let's say like you didn't mill King of the Swamp, you would go for Reinhardt, send Havenis, don't use the effect. And uh, you overlay for Redua and uh, vanish, and then you fuse into the Kaleido Heart. Now, if you go Pearl Rhino, um, pop the Kaleido Heart, and it comes back to search you a trap, something I like to do. Then if they nib you, the Kaleido Heart won't come back because you already used the effect of it coming back. So if you cannot set up a negate, um, just think about keeping uh, the Kaleido Heart on board for the nib. Now, if you don't have any other interaction in this case, you just go for it and say they don't have the nib. Um, most of the time people shouldn't like side nib against this. And you just send this for the interaction. But uh, generally, the Padorino Pop Kaleido Heart trick I like to do when I am uh, backed up by a nib negate. But don't read too much into it. Again, like nib is not that popular right now, but if it pops up again in like main decks, then just consider these play patterns. Okay, so Bistials are very tough for the stack to deal with. Um, that's why Dragon Ink is such a bad matchup. But let's just talk about what you can do. Um, to play around or play against bestials. Now the good news is, like a normal a normal bestial in your like against your turn one combo, you can usually play around. It's just like a random hand trap. Um, the issue is Magnumut because Magnumut first disrupts you and then also gets follow up to disrupt you even further in your next turn. Uh, just like takes out two tier names on its own, which is backbreaking for your uh, resource gain. Um, some things you can do, let's just talk about the Druze Worm. Uh, if you don't want them to get the body is you can chain a Shuffler, shuffle back the body uh, to keep the name because you only have one of each. The issue here is the Druze Worm stays in their hand for their next turn. So um, make sure that you can set up something that uh, it doesn't matter. For example, they do this, they have one Bastille, they use it on the Sharon. You shuffle it back and then you resolve another T name to make a Rule Colors or a Grapha, which can both negate a Bestial. Uh, Rule Colors in this instance is way better because Rule Colors destroys the Bestial so it doesn't come back, whereas Grapha just changes the effect to uh, discard a card, which means again they keep the Bestial in hand. Now, speaking of Rule Colors, sometimes you can hard make her. For example, I just take, took this hand. You have a King of the Swamp. Uh, two King of the Swamps plus any tier, that includes tier 11 cash tier. You discard the King of the Swamp, you get a poly. And then you use poly on two cards. 
to go into localhost. Now, obviously, if you have a tier name instead of the tier cache, that's way better because now you fuse these two into localhost and then Sharon triggers in the grave, deactivate the bestial, you negate it, and the Sharon resolves, and you get into your other fusion that you want to bring out. Um, lastly, for bestials, um, something that can help if you play a lot of against a lot of bestials, but personally, if your locals are dominated by Dragon Link, maybe just don't play tier element. But uh, something you can do if one of your tier names is banished, let's share it. Yeah. Um, if you have one extra deck slot, you can play Lubellion. Lubellion's effect discard a card to fuse and. At the very least, you can use the Bellion plus the banished tier name to go into Dragostopelia. That recycles your tier name and um, you have an interaction. Uh, you make Lubellion by just using one King of the Swan plus one tier name. Uh, another usage of uh, Lubellion, obviously, if they banish two of your tier names, you can shuffle both of them back to make Garura. So that's it for Bestials. Now, last but not least, we have the bane of everyone's existence, Dimension Shifter. So Dimension Shifter, obviously everything you do goes to the graveyard, so that's really, really sad. So what to do against Dimension Shifter? Now, the secret to dealing with Dimension Shifter, the hidden technique that you can use to play around this card is